Welcome back guys. Today I want to show you how you can make your own leather axe. This is a great project for a beginner leather worker, a great way to practice some essential skills and also create something that's really fun. I went and found a, a profile online that I thought looked fun. This spirited axe here is what we're going to use and I'll change it a little bit to, to meet my needs. I might make it a little wider here, um, but you can, you can do whatever you want. You could use a pen to trace around this, but I don't like getting ink on the leather because you never know if it's going to smear or uh, soak in. Sometimes it gets on the edges. So I prefer to use a scratch all. One of the reasons this is such a great starter project is it just takes a few tools, cutting knife, a pricking iron or a sewing punch, some needles and thread. We'll use a little bit of contact cement and we'll be able to practice cutting, sewing, edge finishing, and even a little bit of wet molding. There are many different kinds of contact adhesives, but this is one that I have and it works well for me. After letting that dry some more, it's soaked into the letter quite a bit, so I'm going to add another coat. Let that set until the glue is pretty much dry to the touch, or a little bit tacky. And then you can carefully Fold the leather. Make 
sure you get even pressure all the way across this piece so that you know all that glue has good contact. And you can see our edges are not perfectly lined up, but that's okay because we'll clean that up. Lots of people use a belt sander for this or a sanding drum, but that's not necessary. The edges aren't perfect, but we can take some sandpaper. I like to use something like this 220 grit sandpaper because it doesn't leave it too frayed. It's a little more of a, a clean finish. And we can take this and clean up some of those spots where there are some imperfections. I'm going to go around the edge with this edge beveler. This is a great tool to have and probably should be one of the first tools that you add to your collection, although it's not necessary. But it does help your edges have more of a clean and finished look. After we sew, we'll come back and burnish these edges and make them look even nicer. As we sew this, we'll come around and punch our holes with our sewing punch. And we're going to want to make sure that these holes are consistently spaced from the edge of the leather. And to do that, there's a couple different tools you can use. I like to use this old compass that I found at a thrift store years ago. But what you can do is just use your sewing punch and use the space between two prongs as your guide to come around this. First, we're gonna get this leather a little bit damp so that we can make a good impression as we go around it. While I've got the leather a little damp, I'll put my maker stamp on here. Now I can go ahead and take our pricking iron or our sewing punch and we can start punching holes along our line all the way around this ax head. I've gone around just to kind of mark and make sure that I can make these angles um, and sort of plan out where I plan to put all of the holes. But I think we're good to go around now.
Now, I mean, when you get to this point where the curve of the line makes it so that your chisel won't work if you have a four prong or a five prong, you can use, if you don't have a single prong chisel, you can use something like a small screwdriver. You could, I've seen people use a drill press. There's a few different options to get these holes in here. I'm gonna use this little screwdriver that I have. There are a lot of great stitching tutorials, a lot of folks who've made some really good videos about stitching. So um, I'll put a couple of links in the description for some that I felt were very helpful for me. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time discussing that. I'll do a little bit of stitching to show my process. A lot of people have a, um, a clamp. I don't have one of those yet. I am sure that I'll build one soon, but I've always gotten by with just using my hands. So here's how far I've gotten in just a short time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in and sit down and relax on the couch, my favorite place to sew leather. Finish this up and I'll bring it back out here and show you guys when I'm done. If you choose, you can use an edge dressing or leather dye around the edge just to help the edges look a little bit more finished, but it is not necessary. If you wanted to, you could burnish these edges just how they are. I'm going to use my edge coat because I have it and I think it looks a little bit nicer and then we'll burnish these edges. Thank you. 
can taper the end of the dowel if you want to help slide it in better. I'm going to get this part of our axe head wet so that we can stretch the leather around the dowel as we move it through. I went ahead and got the whole piece wet because I don't want to risk getting any water lines on here. Sometimes that happens, especially if you're using tap water. If you only wet one part of the leather, you can end up with a line. So let's see if we can slide this in here. using my antler to kind of open that up a bit. Now let's see what we can do. Oh, twisting the dowel helps a lot. Okay. As this leather dries, it's going to shrink and tighten up around this dowel, and I really think it will hold on pretty well by itself. In the past, I've, I've never used any glue. You could use some adhesive around the dowel, uh, but I have in the past put a couple of nails or small screws through the back end just for a little extra security. I don't know that, that even that's necessary. I've never had a problem with these falling off or moving, but it is something that you can do if you're worried about it. Let's let this dry. We've let this dry overnight. The leather's nice and stiff now. We're gonna go ahead and finish it up with a little bit of snow seal, which is a wax finish. That can help protect the leather a little bit. There are a lot of different ways to finish leather. A lot of products, oils and waxes. I have a video that talks about finishing leather that you can watch if you're more interested in learning about the different types of leather protection that you can use on your leather. I, I particularly like wax-based treatments. And then I like to go around this one more time with an antler now that it has a little bit of wax on it you can really burnish the edges to have a nice sheen. We'll buff this off a bit. Kind of just kind of, kind of brush some of the wax out of the threads as well. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. It was sure fun to make and a great way to practice your leatherworking skills. Your kids and grandkids will love it, too. We've had one of these around the house for a long time that my kids have chopped anything imaginable with, and it still survived. The only thing that could bring it down was the dogs, as with many things, it seems like, especially leather goods. So keep it away from the dogs. And enjoy.